觉得这这一次还蛮难得的，我本来是想要请我们的制作人来跟大家分享一下，就是说，呃，我们算是从二零一六年开始跟学校会的策展人，就是呃，之前的策展人就是呃，教导会开始进进行就是进一步的联系，还有这次有来的就是 Ben， 那时候他们来到台湾，然后也有去。呃，参加就是二零一六年，当时在就是台呃高雄市立美术馆的一个呃展览，他们其实现场那时候我们的另外一组姐姐他们都有参加，对，所以呃算是一个很好的机缘，就是说这样子的一个跨国的一个合作，而且特别是就是原住民的呃就是艺术家的一个合作，那我们在那时候开始谈。然后到现在，就终于就是说，我们也很开心，就是呃，现场在座的这些艺术家，们在现场，然后让这样子的一个原来的一个构想，它是确实是成真。然后甚至在明年，其实我们都会有在国际交流的合作，也就会跟等一下在台上的这些，还有另外就是呃，可能不会在台上的跟大家一起，就是做一些交流合作。那我们现在就来邀请他们，就是呃，来跟大家来简单的分享一下。那我们。Hi, I'm Nico Larris and Alice and Peter. And so, you want to come? Yeah. Have a seat. Have a seat. Alice, 那有一点点紧张，所以就是我们就希望大家就是比较放放松。You too, okay. 放松心情来，就是那我就坐在这边聊哈。那呃，就是呃。就很开心见他们来，我就请他们先分享一些他们自己的一些经验哦。那呃，就是呃，那个呃 ，Uncle Harry Lee， so do you so want to share us when you've been to Taiwan and then how you feel and then you look at the things? First of all, I'd like to thank Paulina and Mocha for inviting us over to、uh, Taiwan.、Uh, I have enjoyed my time here. And met some of the artists.、Uh, I'm not doing much of it as I'm representing art the Newham Boy Festival on the advisory tour.、Uh, I would like to pay my respects to、uh, Taiwan, the people of Taiwan, and their ancestors. And I have come very welcome here. And、um, have sat with a few of the artists, and,、um, with help of some of the、uh, Taiwanese people, because I don't speak、uh, Mandarin. They have helped、um, make me comfortable in translating and talking with each other.、Uh, it's more about the artists we have than、uh, myself.、Uh, although I'm a storyteller, I'm also、um, Uh, someone who has worked in re-helping staff our revival of our culture and arts, and getting the young involved, so that their arts, which is a mixture of some of the traditional and some of the modern, they make mixtures,、um, and、uh, I'm really excited about how some of them have been. Working together, including a young woman at the back there. That doesn't want to be part of this group, no. But she's an old friend, and、um, they were. She's working with a big company, so we are hopeful from what we have heard, their discussions, that we will see some exciting cross pollination of arts and talents. Uh, we will hope that they do come over and do some、um, shows there, and we will be going to an event tonight to、um, a Miss Taipei,、um, Miss First Nations,、um, and、um, we will also have Alice performing tomorrow. And、uh, I think he's already been working for a while with other artists to、uh, possibly see what ideas they can cross pollinate with each other. When、uh, he's working with、uh, the boys to do some cross pollination, he's good at having tea and he's good at talking to them. And、uh, not only for me, but for the artists, very well. And I'd like to thank him. 
how some of the pocket are pulling with people rather than all come over and uh, we can show them our part of Melbourne and uh, hopefully we need to do it more and more on this cross-pollinization. Because when we talk, we find out we have commonalities. Uh, yes, we have differences in how our cultures work, but the cross-pollinizations where we have those similarities are uh, what excites me about the future. After 40 years, I think I'm getting to the stage where I should sit back more. And that's why I think the artists themselves should be the one to make the talk here.非常高興的過來台灣然後我在台灣覺得人民都好熱情然後讓我覺得很很溫暖雖然我不講中文但是有翻譯啊然後大家都很照顧我這樣子所以非常的開心那我覺得我自己是一個說故事的敘述者那我
在于说，我们不同的国家、不同的艺术家，透过自身的方式去表现，作为一个主要的形象。那从不同的交流、不同的创作中，就可以发现一些共通点跟差异。那这些都是艺术的美。嗯，那我觉得说，在这样，像澳洲有越来越多的移民，然后在这样多元文化的汇聚交流下，我觉得澳洲很快就会有新的艺术形式。像在做像是 Peter 那次 Glenda， 他们也是做这种跨界的创作，融合传统，融合当代。那我的角色就是他们会问我，呃、作为耆老，以前是什么样子？那我就告诉他们说，哦、啊，这是我的传统。他们结合这样的想法、这样的概念，然后融入到自己的创作里面。嗯、我其实很少出国啊，但是因为宣传不是我的工作，那这一次我就蛮难得。那我太太也希望我出去走一走，所以今天就很高兴来来到台湾跟大家分享。And Peter, can you talk more about your artworks, especially this time you to show us about uh, political issues? Can you uh, tell us about your inspirations or so the idea where you come from? Talk more. Thank you. Um, well, I just want to start by acknowledging you know, the people and ancestors of Taiwan and paying my respects to these elders. Past, present, and emerging. I'll start. And um, I just want to thank Uncle Larry for being here. It's good to have an elder with us um, from Australia. So we think that relationship between elders and younger people is really important when we look up to our elders in Australia, as I'm sure they do here in Taiwan. 首先就是感谢当代馆的邀请，那今天很高兴能够来这边，那我也想要就是先非非常高兴能够来台湾，然后更了解台湾的原住民文化。也很高兴今天这次有长老赖瑞跟我们一起来，我觉得新一代跟老一代之间的沟通交流是非常重要的，像在台湾也是。嗯、um, ，What are some of the things that are running in my work、um, that I'm showing here? Um, I often uh, make work that relates to my to um, oppressed identities. You know, one we are quite an oppressed group in Australia, being Aboriginal people, um, and I'm also part of the LGBTI community. So sometimes I try to. Think about where those two worlds intersect and collide, and um, what what it means to be an indigenous queer person in contemporary Australia. 其实我的创作就是想要展现成为一个弱势团体的身份认同，因为我既是同志又是原住民。那这两个身份在我创作中不断的去交谈，不断的去冲突。所以我想要探讨，就是在澳洲，身身为一个同志原住民。Um, my work here is revisioned. The images I use are images of Aboriginal people drawn by the English and French and other、um, European nations. They were drawn in etchings and sort of travelled over Europe as images of us that were sent from Australia back in the 19th century. 所以我的一个作品就是去再现出十九世纪英法的殖民者来到澳洲时的整个状况。Um, I've given them a new life, and I use them to comment on、um, my contemporary position as an indigenous person.、Um, we often talk about the European gaze, and it made those images. Some of them.、Uh, They look very European.、Um, it's funny how the colonizers or the people who came saw us and tried to make us into savages and less than human. So some of those、um, themes still run today. 
comment on contemporary issues, sometimes in the Aboriginal community, sometimes in the Aboriginal queer community, sometimes in the queer community. Um, I think I'm giving them a new life, and um, where the gallery that um, had the images is called Ballarat Gallery, and they asked me to work on that project specifically, to do something with these images. They wanted an Aboriginal person, so they thought it would be too insensitive for a non-Indigenous, too insensitive for a non-Indigenous person sometimes to use those images, because they're loaded with meaning. Um, and just the film is about a story that was told to me by one of my elders about one of our sacred sites we quote to visit. But up in the hill, there used to be rock art, you know, drawings by indigenous people. And um, the European came and scrubbed them off with a brush. So they destroyed our sacred site. So we reenacted that scene. And it talks about erasure of the artwork, but also erasure how Aboriginal people have been erased in Australian culture as well. And I guess one of the other motifs I use is the dingo, the Australian native dog. Um, it's a native, but it's not seen, it's not held as in the same regard as the koala or the kangaroo or other natives, which are protected species. To make a positive quote, we have to import the skins from New Zealand now because we can't hunt them traditionally like we do traditionally. So the dingo is not a protected animal, only in certain parts of Australia, but most of Australia it's not protected, and it gets in the way of hunting sheep. So I see it as a second-class native, and often I feel like, as a gay Aboriginal person, I'm on the outside of the culture, Aboriginal culture, because I'm an outsider to the group because of my sexuality. Um, and I think a lot of um, queer people or gay people and LGBTI people feel that, Aboriginal people feel a bit of isolation because of that and our difference. So the ding dingo has become a symbol. So even though you might see the work and I ha I'm having fun with it, that's what that symbol is. Like it's a little native that hasn't got the same sort of protections. We've just got marriage equality in Australia in the LGBTI <coughs> community, which is amazing. Um, but we're still fighting for rights. So I fight for my rights, for my Aboriginal rights, and for my gay rights. Yeah, and I'm inspired by activists and activist art. I'm inspired by activists and activist art. Um, I think I was when I was a young man in Australia, it was okay to bash gay people, to assault them without any crime, and to murder them. So that's the Australia I grew up in. So I learned quickly to hide myself away. Um, and I found some of that, um, we call it home, that was extreme homophobia. There's still some homophobia in battles that we have to fight. So within the mainstream culture and within the Aboriginal culture. So that's where my art's working around all those sort of areas um, and talking about all those intersections of life.
my life. And really, most of my art comes from the life I've lived. Um, I just, there's some images coming up, and um, I use totem figures, like in um, Aboriginal culture, and I see the dingo as a personal totem on the mind, but my family totem is the crow, a black bird. Um, this one's more to do with sexuality. These are just random images of some that aren't in the show, but um, some of my practice, so it's... Native love rights, so we're just commenting on native like rights and gay rights at the same time. And I know the rainbow is an important symbol here. Um, so it crosses over as well, it has many meanings, and often my art has double meanings. And this is a possum skin cloak that I made that had a rainbow underneath. A traditional cloak that someone would wear. And it's really talking about the intersection of Aboriginal culture and queerness. And this is me in a mask, dingo mask, wearing it. And people going, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the underside of it. It was in an exhibition earlier this year. And there, the, the designs are based on um, traditional shield um, patterns. This is an Aboriginal slogan that I've co-opted into um, always was, always will be Aboriginal land, but I've said always was, always will be Aboriginal queer body and put a rainbow on the background. Yeah. And that's me wearing the cloak. So it's pretty regal and I called it Naruto Queen. These are some of my dog work with texture. So I often use me in that um, uh, low tech, so even my collages are done by hand. Um, and here's different elements going on in these works as well. Stencils. So I'm influenced by street art and pop art. traditional motifs in there, um, all mixed up in the contemporary world, yeah, drawing the ancestors with me. That's my creative being called by Amy. He takes the form of a man who really loves you.
呃，因为呃，这个有一些呃，观众听众可能不是很清楚，因为呃，这一次呢，他来到就是台湾，就是还有另外一个就是呃，就是呃，合作的一个工作，就是跟台湾的另外一位就是创作者东东宝温，然后他有做视觉，有做表演艺术，然后呃，他们两个就是这一次有到花莲，就是碰面，碰面来去想彼此之间的一些。呃，可能未来在二零一九年的时候，都都会去做，就是到澳洲去做交流，然后会跟 Peter 会有一个一起一起合作的作品。所以他其实刚刚在分享说，他这次去花莲，然后呃，就是有很很多的一些收获，然后也在未来可能会再继续发展更好的。Uh, we can talk. Uh, first, we talk about the you met uh, Edi Kalu and then talk your your explanation. Um, I firstly want to acknowledge and pay my respects to First Nations people here in the room, my First Nations families from Australia, and our elder Uncle Larry, and also um, just introduce myself as. Over um, it's really special for me to be here in Taipei, in Taiwan, um, especially as a young person traveling with artists that I really respect and an elder that I might even know for so I think maybe I don't know, maybe a year or so um, in the arts world. Um, so and it's pretty amazing, especially being someone from the country um, and doing something overseas. The arts was never something that I envisioned for myself. So I feel very lucky and very grateful to be here. Um, so yesterday I went to Hualien and met with Paolo um, because I'm not a visual artist I'm um, I, I guess a musician I play piano and I sing um, so I'm here to meet Ilan and play a show with her tomorrow afternoon um, so last night we um, got to exchange songs one in Amis language and then one of my so we got to meet and she taught me some songs and tried to teach me how to dance too. I'm not very good at dancing either. <laughs> um, I guess maybe the background about me is helpful. Um, I've only really been doing music professionally for two years, and um, I'm 23. And um, I also didn't grow up in a house where my language was spoken, or um, I mean, culture was always a big part of my life, but not in the way that um, not in the way that I got to learn my language or enough of my stories. So it's been something that I'm getting more of as I get older. Um, I also don't consider my music um, very political in the way that what I'm talking about or what I'm singing about. Um, but 
but to me what's really important is that um, the most important thing for me is representation within contemporary music in Australia because I think for too long Aboriginal people have been expected to be one kind of person but we're actually you know, so multifaceted and different and there's so many of us too from different backgrounds and different cultures so for me um, it's not so much about being political in my songs, it's more about me existing as a young indigenous person in the music industry, just as a young. Uh, um, so, yeah, mostly in my songs I'm singing about very personal experiences and um, a lot does have to do with identity. I think it's, I think a commonality between First Nations people is that our thoughts are consumed quite a lot by our identity and thinking about what that means and how we navigate ourselves through the world as a First Nations person. So I think a lot about that and I sing a lot about that. And um, sometimes when I first started, I got a lot of people asking me why my songs were so sad and why couldn't I write a happy song. Um, but I actually had a really nice conversation with another governor back home, Uncle Richard Edwards, and I talked about how um, it's completely fair and reasonable for my songs to be sad because as Aboriginal people we've experienced a lot of loss and um, it's not been really given enough space in the art world to be listened to. So it's important for us to take up space in, um, in different avenues of art. <laughs> Actually,我的原著里动风点就是都看在许多，不断在探索自己的身份定位是什么。很多人常问我说，为什么你的歌听起来都这么悲伤，不能去唱一点快乐的歌吗？然后我后来有一次跟一个长老谈话，他就觉
，所以再次感谢林汉医师这个邀请。Uh, of the button we didn't take by Uruguay is a border one language of the Wurundjeri people, which means tomorrow. But we use the symbol of the clouds because tomorrow is always moving, as are the clouds, and tomorrow is always changing, as are clouds. So the two symbologies. Work together because we are talking about modern creative artists um, who, as I say, may one day develop a unique style we haven't seen or heard yet. Um, so the symbol is also, you know, clouds are a symbol of uh, water, a symbol of uh, change. And we used it as that because we felt we are talking about today's young creatives, well, not just the young ones, but the creatives who are bringing in change in their communities by the art they do. So the next generation of artists may even go a little bit further than what the artists of today are. And so for us, we decided Uruguay as the symbol of it because it does mean tomorrow. And we are all hopeful that tomorrow keeps going and change keeps going. Um, as I was born and raised in an era where we had no rights. Uh, as Frida had Frida to and we were there from that change to when we started gaining rights and started gaining change. And we know change does not stop like the clouds. Change keeps happening. And we are quite proud that our younger ones are learning something about past in our art, in our culture, and learning some of their own family histories and uh, their own clan tribal group, grouping histories. And it makes us fill with pride. Like Alice, as you just said, she's been doing it for two years and uh, some of us have been lucky to watch her grow. And uh, one day Alice will be in Peter or my shoes, where we are watching the next young artist grow. Uh, so we're trying to make you avoid that. Not just the Aboriginal people in Australia, but to come and collaborate and so that we can help see growth in our communities. And um, who knows, one day we might have a uh, world indigenous art that is even bigger than what we do now.
我们今天差不多，那我们现在就开放给就是现场的就是观众。呃，其实大家真的是蛮难得来的。然后我刚刚也说过，这个这个想法是从二零一六年，然后到现在，呃，今年有一个实践的一个机会，然后到明年再继续发展。啊，就是现场在座真的是难得邀请到，就包括就是我们的长老，然后跟其实跟台湾有距离，然后其实我们对我们的呃长者是非常敬重的，他们真的有太多的故事，我们现在从他们身上会学习的真的非常多。然后艺术家也从这个学习过程中，然后转化，然后认识自己，然后也在为在为未来，然后还在努力当中。那我们现在开放给现场的听众。你好，我有一个简单的问题，就是这场的论坛的主题是那个不消费身份的艺术节嘛？那是不是可以请几位讲者稍微解释一下，就是这个议题上的什么？
no one person, no one movement will change anything unless the arts helps you. Because the arts gets the people's attention. The arts get people asking the question, oh, did that happen? The arts get the people thinking. Because you put a piece of art, sometimes you don't quite understand it, but you go, hmm, I wonder what that's about. So art for me has been a way that in my past and in my uh, still now then, uh, I've used and had artists that have helped me change things. And um, I probably would be still talking about these things if the artist didn't come and go, hey, we've got something about that. Or, hey, we're going to do paintings on that. Or, we'd like to do. And it got the Australian public's attention. It was not me really that got their attention, but with the artists. And with another issue that we helped raise back then, which we're now discussing in Victoria, there was a band called Yoffy Bindi who wrote a song that sang a song called Treaty. Last year, the state government of Victoria in Australia asked us what we want. We said treaty. And so we are now negotiating with the, uh, the state government on that issue. It's still a few years before it will be worked out. But the fact is, that song was a Australian hit. And um, it helped in the growth of the idea. We've never had settlement with governments. We've never had um, peace with governments. We've never had the recognition of who we are with governments. And finally, even though the song has been around for about 10 years, it was the one that started it, the discussions. Everyone was already talking about it, but they were getting nowhere. And then some song that makes number one throughout Australia and the top selling album at the time of the year brought that to the attention and every Aboriginal go, yeah, that's what we want. We want a two-year settlement. And so it helped the movement grow. Always uh, not that I'm anti young. I'm just uh, needing some of the things we suffered from the past. And these artists, with their artwork, with their music, have helped get us seen, get us talked about, and get us to talk with people about what we want. So for me, whether it be traditional art, by practicing traditional art, it brings people's attention. When you mix traditional with the new, it actually makes, yes, a new world, but it also makes people go, oh, who could we talk to about this? And that's the most important thing I have done in my communities in Victoria. There are 38 separate flag groups. There are various languages in it. English is a language that has united us. And it's allowed us to get those messages across that we needed to get across. Not that I would call most of the artists political. They were just their experiences in life that they wanted to talk about. They wanted to paint. They wanted to see. They wanted to created within mainstream Australia the idea that perhaps we should start sitting down with the Aboriginal people and learning more about them. Uh, so for me, having lived through some of those periods, and um, now I'm talking about us sort of slightly older, we lived through those periods and we see the artists that were practicing traditions helped bring about awareness of 
that we still have a culture of traditions and the artists that came and started performing about the changes needed have helped create change. For me, art itself is not the evil. It just opens the door and opens people's eyes and people go, oh, okay. We like that song. Why did you sing that? And so the stories come out. And um, as I say, when I was younger, these days, I don't encourage people to get political. I just encourage them to be artists. Because then they tell their story. Art tells the story of people. Maybe you respond to that. We grow more when we have the mixed out of God and you. Okay,我们简单的麻烦一下，呃，有没有你的艺术节？其实并不是要鼓励所艺术家和物证者，而是去透过呃他们的创作，去说你自己的人生中生活中有什么样的诉求，想要争取什么样的权利。那我自己从小
about uh, anyone you say uh, in your in your culture, in your school, and uh, community, and they have, have a lot of uh, some women that yes, they are powerful. Or I would like to know the have anyone influenced you about your community? You can say, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, like I said before, I grew up a lot around women all the time. Um, but because my dad, who is an Aboriginal man, and I have a non Indigenous mom, because um, my dad passed away before I was born, um, I, was, I learned everything from my aunties. Um, and they are very strong women, and um, my auntie. Um, Auntie Eleanor Burke, and she, um, she did, I have to pay my respects to my auntie a lot when I talk about her, but she was really active in uh, the academic world in Melbourne, even though that's not our country. She worked there and um, did a lot of work in recovering our language because my grandmother um, actually worked in linguistics and helped write um, a dictionary with a non-Indigenous academic person. So yeah, this is what I'm trying to say is just that because of because I learned everything from my aunties, um, yeah, the idea for me as a young woman, um, I was really encouraged to know that I could do whatever I wanted to do, and I was really lucky to have that example of my aunties that were working in different fields in the 60s and the 70s in Australia and there was a lot going on with land rights and um, I just, I know that every struggle they have and they fought really hard and they had a really hard time and this is only the generation above me and um, you know they had these challenges with getting proper education because they were Aboriginal people and um, yeah, I know that what I have now is because of what they fought to give me. So um, it's really important for me that I, you know, I use that well, but also that I use it how I want to and um, just, yeah, own my heart because, um, yeah, each of our voices are important to her because we have, we all have, Auntie是很好的,他是我去的阿斯。其实都是得来不易的我们的同才也现在也仍然在就是不论是用什么方法
好，那我们就谢谢谢谢他们，谢谢感谢他们，然后也谢谢大家来。